The Kiha 391, which began running tests on the Sanayo main line and Hakubi line, faced new challenges with the adoption of the unfamiliar gas turbine. Starting on a 25-per-mile uphill gradient in a tunnel with the 6th or 7th notch caused stalling. Due to poor acceleration on the gradient, the exhaust gases hitting the tunnel ceiling recirculated into the intake vents on the car body sides. For gas turbines, which excel in low-temperature environments, inhaling hot air was fatal, causing the engine protection system to activate and cut off the fuel supply. To prevent this, wind deflectors were installed around the exhaust outlets on the roof. From the side, these look like large boxes, but they are simple enclosures with nothing inside. Additionally, a snowplow was installed in preparation for winter tests, shortening the skirt and giving a different impression from its initial appearance. Full-scale high-speed running tests using the tilt system also began on the Hakubi line and the Sanin main line. High noise during startup remained an issue, and since the wind deflectors themselves had no soundproofing function, there was no noise reduction effect. On the other hand, thanks to the wind deflectors, the 4VK engine for the generator was less affected by high-temperature exhaust. When operating with the gas turbine exhaust facing upwind, the increase in radiator water temperature was suppressed. Adding a hydraulic transmission improved starting acceleration, eliminating the sluggishness during tunnel incline starts and reducing the re-ingestion of hot exhaust gases. This also prevented the use of the gas turbine in a stalled state, thus reducing high noise during startup. However, it was challenging to commercialize a hydraulic transmission with a direct clutch for 1,000 horsepower. During tests with the 391, even the clutch for coasting frequently failed, leading to its abandonment. Currently, the maximum output for a single engine in diesel multiple units is 750 horsepower, and even Voith does not use a clutch for the direct stage, relying instead on fluid coupling. In addition to technical difficulties, its weight, which would account for about 5% of the train's total weight, was also disliked. When the weakness in starting power was pointed out by reporters, the engineers replied that there were no plans to use it for local trains. In the fragile non-electrified lines of the time, weight reduction was prioritized to lessen the track burden for high-speed operations.